Yo, yo, it's ODB from OLP. This is issue 134 of Mini Trucking Magazine. It's a good one. This one's February 2003. It's hard to believe that basically we just passed the 20th anniversary of this issue. Rest in peace to the great Ernie Macias. There's a lot to talk about. Now, I know some of you are going to say, yo, ODB, you missed issue 133. Technically, I did issue 133 prior uh, about a year ago, we launched uh, the Time Machine merchandise, which was the 20th anniversary of the debut of Time Machine. And th uh, this issue flip through is in the playlist for 2003. So this is the January issue here, issue 133. Again, it's in the playlist. All of these flip throughs are. So if you've watched these kind of in chronological order or, or if you're new to that channel, go back and check this one out. It's a good one. Possibly, off the top of my head, I think it's the only issue where it's a cover truck and insert photo. Pretty sick, the Back to the Future type theme there. Awesome stuff. So I'm going to put this over here. There's another issue that I'll tie in that ties into this cover as well. So the Tilt Bed Mitsubishi Mighty Max. Ernie loved the Mighty Max trucks. I believe, going from memory, I think it was Showfest 03. So... Around this time, about a month prior to the recording of this, 20 years ago, I met Ernie, got a chance to hang out with him. We were riding in the back of a dually. I think it was a severed Oklahoma truck, real low, a 3500. And uh, he, you know, we were having a good time in the good old days. And Ernie looks at me and goes, man, this guy's crazy, talking about me. And we always kind of had a friendship from there. Um, I didn't talk to him as much as some of you guys did. Uh, I wasn't as close to him, certainly, as some of you guys, but I did a couple deals with him for bike stuff and um, got a chance to hang out with him a couple times, and he was a world-class dude. So rest in peace again, Ernie Macias. Now, a couple of things. Ernie, you guys would probably know um, officially when he started the club. Ernie was on the podcast early on, but I want to say this. This was the first No Regrets truck, as you would imagine, on the cover. It's the third Mitsubishi Mighty Max. There's going to be five total, okay, out of 269. That's not a lot. But here's the crazy thing. It's the third one, and out of those total five, once we get through all of the issues, Ernie has three of those, okay? So kind of crazy um, to think that. Now, um, the other tie-in that I'll talk about in a few minutes ties into Jamie, who is on the cover. So it's a lot of information. Appreciate you guys rocking with me. Let's get to the end. Super, super, super awesome cover. Super awesome feature. Uh, Wes Allison, of course, shot it. And that is, this. Is, if I'm scoring correctly, his 38th credited cover for Mini Trucking Magazine. So, sorry for the long intro. You know how I do. Got to get the facts out there. So, you got a front three-quarter shot there of Ernie's truck, the Tacoma Headlights. You could see that thing was laid flat. Bio Customs, of course, in the house with a lot of the work, if not all of it, on there. A good relationship with Max, and Max has been on a couple of times. Shout out to Max. Uh, here you see the Ford Ranger. That was RA Florida. Got a chance to see that thing a couple times. Kind of erased pe from people's existence, or memory, uh, rather. I remember asking a couple people about that truck, and they're like, man, I don't remember that. I'm like, dude, how do you not remember that one, man? That thing is awesome. Uh, the weekend that wasn't, so Lance talks about some crazy stuff with uh, Desert Dragger, the wheels um, following through with one of the companies and trying to, you know, thrash to get it done. Uh, we'll see more of Desert Dragger in this issue. If you like what we're doing here, please leave a comment, even if it's a thumbs up emoji. It definitely helps. And uh, certainly I've seen, uh, I, w I look at all the comments and I really appreciate you guys chiming in going, yo, this is a cool project. I love that. You're going through these magazines, man. Thank you, guys. Lippard's Revenge. So this was Jeff Lippard, 93 Toyota Standard Cab, Statesville, North Carolina. Tons of graphics. And uh, Lance shot that one. Again, the era of a lot of painted dashes. I know it's still a mod, but in this era, I certainly remember a lot of guys had the painted dashes and they always look good. Twisted Dreams, a second annual scrape session. A lot of shows like this maybe only happened a year or two. Um, 
maybe kind of smaller shows, but certainly uh, important for our scene, you know, to be able to have even a local show if it was only a few years. Uh, I don't know how long that show ran, but just as an example. So Tech Article by Lance. Get that Vier ad that ran a good bit with the Avalanche. I was never a fan of the cladding. My buddy and I used to always talk about this when GM used all that cladding. And, of course, some guys would paint it. It was kind of a bear to take all that stuff off. But um, I liked when they came out with the ones without the cladding. There's the Slammed Impressions. Nissan hard body. You can see, again, more color coming into the magazine. Certainly black and white here on the left side. Heroes of Fabrication. So, uh, again, uh, Mike Finnegan, you know, wish him all the success. And he's been doing stuff a long time uh, to get to where he's at. Okay, Jonathan Graham. So, this is, again, a truck. I've got a few photos. I posted a couple a while, ways back. And uh, this is an awesome truck. And I remember asking a couple people um, about it. And they're like, man, I kind of don't remember that one. And this, again, was an era 20 years ago with uh, plenty of awesome trucks, including this thing, man. You know, Rangers aren't the easiest to build, and this thing is super sick. Always love this three rear three-quarter shot there. You see the tag was Fun Bags, so kind of a cool, fun tag. Uh, billet steering wheel, nice gauges, really full-blown show truck. Uh, this was RA Florida for those that might be newer members or people that have forgotten. Awesome truck. The fourth annual East Coast Nats. So here you can see um, it's going to tie in in the mini truck and graffiti, but there's Danny Rose S10. So I'll talk more about that here in, in just a moment. But you can see there some of the, the trucks, including the Mitsubishi Mighty Max. Again, left side, you can see uh, color, right side, not, no color. And uh, that's just because they're getting closer to all color, but not yet. It's crazy to think, as I say that so many times, that, that we're still not in color 20 years ago. But uh, with printing cost and things like that and trying to, you know, maintain a magazine, certainly that, that would have been a big thing uh, budget-wise. No regrets. Ernie Macias hits the big time. So much awesomeness here. I uh, really loved how they did this. They tied in on his back logo. Certainly awesome. Alba Wheels, uh, one of two cover trucks that will end up with uh, Alba Wheels. So here's uh, the tie-in that I wanted to mention. Uh, I'll tie in a couple of things. So uh, Ernie loved Mitsubishi's, of course, we all know that. And you can see here the beautiful Jamie Medeiros, I believe is how you say her name. Um, I said, I think when we went through this one, one of the hottest models uh, or women, woman uh, to, to grace the cover. And you can see here, it was not her first time. Um, Ernie talked about it um, in one of the posts that he made one time. And I took a screenshot before I started this. When I posted uh, Nathan's uh, uh, Mitsubishi, um, he says, funny story, Jamie, the model, also posed for the uh, for my first cover. This is Ernie, rest in peace. When my truck got shot for the cover, Lance asked who I would pick because I loved the truck and knew the cover so well. I picked Jamie, then he made it happen. So pretty cool. Again, rest in peace to the, the great Ernie Macias. But uh, there's the beautiful Jamie Medeiros. Stunning, stunning, stunning. And again, I think I said it in this issue probably. Can we bring back models on the cover, please? I think it's an awesome thing. Um, this one you can see again with the staples. Um, this one has held up well. Um, one of a few of my copies. And um, really liked that they did this a little bit different. Again, the way the model is standing in the front passenger side. You've got the other shot that they kind of boom the rear kind of three-quarter here. Uh, just a great layout um, with the feature kind of over it, wrapped around the cab, and then boom. This would have been an, you know, an awesome plaque as an owner to be able to, you know, to purchase. Um, again, I think Ernie, I want to say it was May 2003. 
Um, I remember Steve Wilk also was there. Um, it was either 02, 03, but my brain's going to 03. And uh, I got a chance to hang out. I took a photo of the truck, a few photos uh, on film. And um, Steve even gave me that year a grinder TV mag issue that I did not have with the full size with wire wheels. I always remember that. Um, Steve is on our list. We got to get him on. I talked to him at LST. And uh, he's still doing the damn thing. But you can see here. Just awesome. And you can, they do mention there, this is Jamie's second appearance on the cover. Those high heels, though. Super clean. Rest in peace, Ernie. Much respect to all No Regrets. Um, Ernie was always big about the hashtag No Regrets CC. Which, of course, Ernie being kind of an old school guy, CC standing for Car Club. So we always hashtag that in his honor, No Regrets CC on Instagram. If you tap on it, you'll see all their awesome members rides. All right, Texas Heat Wave 13, back to Austin. They had, um, I think, bounced around a couple times. There's the famous Ranger. This is the one um, I've mentioned a couple times. I sometimes get these Isuzu's mixed up. This was pretty cool because if you look there, you see the door handle. They dropped it to the bottom. So out of sight, out of mind somewhat from the top, you know, how many people walk up to a body drop truck and realize it was down there. But just still made easy access to get in if, um, you know, versus maybe having uh, shaved. You can see here the Ranger from Pebble Pushers. Here this Isuzu from Pebble Pushers. I've got some photos of it back in the day. Super clean. I think it had the Passport Dash in it. All painted. Awesome stuff. Here you can see the shaved body line and then this famous Mazda. But uh, Heat Wave brought out the heat, pun intended. And uh, I only got to go the one year, but I had a good time. It was hot, of course. You can see the Ranger. Um, you see Frank's truck, another one here. We saw this one at Spring Break one year and saw that at uh, Heat Wave. You can see uh, a lot of black and white. And kind of takes a little bit away from some of the awesomeness of these trucks. This uh, this is the one I was talking about here. The Amigo Fenders, I think it is. And then Pebble Pusher's got a lot of love that year. This thing is crazy. I talked to the owner a couple times. He'd put a Flamingo sometimes hanging out in the fender well. There is the cover truck. Um, I posted that cover recently. And uh, a lot of people, including the original owner, Mike, chimed in and uh, kind of said it's no longer in existence. Some of the parts, I guess, technically are. But... Um, it's crazy, you know, to be able to post something and, and see so many different people chime in and people saying, hey, man, that, that truck's etched in my mind because that's when I got into mini trucking and so on and so forth. Uh, here is Sled Supreme Dustin Hedges 9 Foe S10. Again, another awesome feature, something a little bit different. Kind of that front and center boom, that top photo. And then you've got, you know, four nice photos here just kind of for a two-page feature. Um, boom, right in your face. Again, a couple of guys, including we saw it on Suicidal Toy, running the Zebra Print, the Ragtop, Phantom Grill. A little bit different of an S10 build, I think, with that front end and whatnot. But, man, certainly deserving of a feature. Dragging at speed. Actually, uh, more than a two-page, a three-page feature. Crazy Dash. Awesome stuff. I loved when guys did things that were a little bit different, you know. Who cares if it was well received by the masses, you know? You're doing the damn thing. Tacoma. If you like what we're doing here, check out OLP via any podcast app. We appreciate it. There's the blazer with the school, the school time theme cover. This is Michael and Tiffany Jeffries, 86 miles to B, 2000 total outcast. Phantom Grill. Crazy graphics. Cool feature. You can see the sky and stuff. All of that. The tools starting to come in and be used a little bit more for the layouts and whatnot. DIY phenomenon. White face gauges. Tons going on in the bed and the engine bay. Of course on Dros, Hydros. 
drag ready. So a little bit more color in the tech articles by Lance. Here is Project Desert Dragger Part 3, the final Smackdown. So this ties into Lance's editorial. A lot of work, you know, working back with different shops, trying to get it done. It would go on to be at, what, SEMA, I think, this year, 03? I know Charles Armstrong's uh, truck was there too. I think it was 02, 03. Um, maybe 02. I get the years mixed up a little bit. But I remember it was in the Vier booth. Pretty cool here to see how low it was on the trailer. Cool stuff. Now, um, uh, you can see here under construction, you got Mike Gross and Alan Williams. Seems like I saw this truck one year. I don't know if it was at Indy Truck Bash, but uh, it looks like the Z71 wheels. Pretty cool. Now, something I want to point out is you got the Mitsubishi here. We saw earlier in show coverage. Look like probably lining up somewhere for a feature. Cool photo of the kid in the tire to think that kid's over 20 years old now. That's how old we're getting, folks. Uh, Danny Rose, so rest in peace. Danny, um, his truck was featured June 2002. And as you guys might recall, um, I mentioned this. He had passed away on August 9th of 2002. So he would have got to see his dream, his truck, uh, Acrophobic, as it was named, uh, he was born February 9th, 1971, and he passed away again on August 9th, 2002. We would, uh, I, I made a couple of posts about it in the past. I, I try not to beat certain things, you know, because, you know, I don't know if it negatively, you know, brings back memories for family or what, but I don't think I posted last year, which would have been the 20th anniversary of his posting, but, or of his passing, excuse me, but. Um, certainly rest in peace to him and I know there were some shows around the country um, if you click on the hashtag RIP Danny Rowe R-O-W-E on Instagram you'll see a couple of the posts that I've made uh, there was a cool billet award given away at one of the shows and um, you know they kind of playing catch up obviously in the magazine being a few months behind they did stick that photo in there which was nice of them to do for Lance and team so uh, to end on a high note, um, it's kind of tough to follow that up. Again, Ernie Macias, rest in peace. This is issue 134, February 2003. How cool is it that you basically are coming right after Time Machine? That's awesome. You know, two amazing trucks. My understanding is this truck's still around. Um, there's, I think, plans in the works to get it back to, to the state that it was in. Um, again, you guys can chime in if you have more information. Uh, not a lot of Mitsubishi Mighty Max on the cover, as I mentioned. And um, I think that's it. Again, two trucks, including this one, will have Alba wheels. Two cover trucks, rather. Jamie Manderos, two thumbs up. Certainly one of my, if not... It'd be hard for me to pick a model, my favorite of all time. But uh, she would be at the top of the list, I think. If she happens to see this or her friend send it to her. Smoking hot. Rest in peace, Ernie. He loved this truck. He's, his dream came true as well. Stay on the rise, y'all. Subscribe. We out here.